he has published widely in journals and books. Professor Obo's books are in 57 world-class university libraries, which include Harvard, British Library, Library of Congress, Stanford, and others. He has traveled to a number of countries to present academic papers. The countries include Japan, Washington, Puerto Rico, South Africa, and United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now introduce our 19th inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Godwin Hobo. Acting Vice Chancellor of Benson Zausa University, Professor Oyodeji, the University, the Registrar of Benson Zausa University, and the Secretary to Council, Mr. Beating Okoedo Itoya, and the Boxer of the University, Dr. Iguaba, and the University, the Acting University Librarian. Dr. Mrs. Rooks Mary Odiachi. I also want to recognize the, the, the dean of the faculty of, not the dean, no. the provost, I beg your pardon, the provost of the College of Medical Sciences, Right Reverend Professor Vincent Iyawe. I also want to recognize the dean of School of Postgraduate. Professor Fred Obo, and the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Education, Professor Mrs. Alexandra Isimaje. So I want to recognize the Dean of College of Agricultural and Agricultural Technology, Professor Mrs. Helen Ajayi, and the Dean of Students, Professor Mrs. Mabel Egiato, and the Acting Dean of School of Basic Medical and Health Sciences, Dr. Rafa Inhuense, and the Acting Dean of Law, Dr. Joseph Ekwe. You will agree with me that those of us academic, we don't have the skills that the registrar have. So those initial perks is expected. Thank you very much. All other protocols duly observed. I count it a great privilege to stand before you here today to present the 19th inaugural lecture of Benson in Daosa University. As I have earlier been introduced, I'm a professor of median study, but my area of study is on the interplay between median and election, looking at the tripartite relationship between median, election, and African politics. But in today's inaugural lecture, our focus will be on the interplay between media and Nigerian election, under the title, The Same Difference between median and politics, and the implication it has for the Nigerian election. And many of us, we often take for granted that Nigerians should be able to conduct credible election, given the relative maturity of our democracy. But we forget that election does not take place within the vacuum. There are extraneous variables and intervening variables that we must control if we hope to see free and fair election. And that is why I would like to first look at the Nigerian ethnic configuration and the implication it has for Nigerian election. You recall that in 1914, the British colonialist regime amalgamated the southern and the northern Nigeria without even the consent of the ethnic nationality comprising the Nigerian state. Like Ojuku said, that was the first mistake. Because when the British government amalgamated, they did not make any effort to amalgamate the various community comprising the Nigerian state. But surprisingly, soon after that amalgamation, the North started showing some sign of reluctance being a member of the Nigerian state. And that was demonstrated, if you remember, that in 1953, precisely, Chief Anthony now removed a motion for Nigerian self-government. And he was proposing to other members of 
the parliament to adopt the motion that Nigeria should become a self-governed nation by 1956. What his thought was that, let the colonialists be around and let them see how we practice the art of democracy. But the Nigerian People Congress that formed the majority of the House, 50%, they rejected the motion. And Awo Lowe, who was the opposition leader in parliament, seek to know, why did you have to reject the motion? And Tafa, uh, uh, Balewa, precisely, responded that they will not be ready. So when will you be ready? When do you think Nigeria should become independent? He said, as soon as practical. Which, if 